Things are continually getting crazier here in Canada with regards to how the government is responding to these freedom convoy protests happening around the country. As of yesterday, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced that they're going to be enacting the Emergency Measures Act to go after the funding of this convoy, which involves the idea that funding these people is the equivalent to funding terrorists. Let's have a listen. First, we are broadening the scope of Canada's anti-money laundering and terrorist financing rules so that they cover crowdfunding platforms and the payment service providers they use. These changes cover all forms of transactions, including digital assets, such as cryptocurrencies. The government will also bring forward legislation to provide these authorities to FinTrack on a permanent basis. Second, the government is issuing an order with immediate effect under the Emergencies Act, authorizing Canadian financial institutions to temporarily cease providing financial services where the institution suspects that an account is being used to further the illegal blockades and occupations. So now without a court order, uh, personal bank accounts can be frozen. Now this could be because somebody is sending a large amount of money to the Freedom Convoy. This could be the personal accounts that are owned by people within the Freedom Convoy. We don't know. The reality of the situation is, is that by expanding these measures, the Canadian government now has an extreme amount of power to try and deal with this convoy. Now, on top of this, the Emergency Measures Act allows the government to start requesting that you know various companies that are typically private companies have to take measures or have to take actions on behalf of what the government wants. So if they force a tow trucking company to go in there and remove all of these um, particular trucks, they have to do it. Now, of course, there's gonna be little ways around it, like, hey, maybe all of, all of a sudden all these tow truck drivers suddenly have COVID and they can't come to work that day. But the general point is, is Canada is doing everything in their power to try and forcibly end this particular convoy without actually having a discussion, without actually listening to what it is that these people want and taking it into consideration and trying to explore how they could come to some sort of negotiation. Instead, the government is telling, basically they're telling lies about what's actually going on they're trying to convince an entire nation that these people are now terrorists. Their own Canadian citizens are now terrorists, right? And it's, it's become this massive sort of ego protection that's taking place here where, you know, Justin Trudeau just cannot come to grips with the idea that people don't support the idea of what his government has put forth in terms of this federal mandate. And instead of just the simple solution, which is ending these mandates, which are not in any way supported by science, he's holding down, no, no, this is going to stay in place regardless of what you say, regardless of what's going on with this protest. We're keeping them in place. Now, some people are going to say, and this is what government has been saying over and over and over again. Hey, you know what? These protests, they've come. They've made their point. It's clear now. We've been hearing different premiers. We've been hearing Justin Trudeau saying things like, yeah, just go home. It's time to go home. We, we, we've heard you now. You've made your point. But the reality of the situation is, and if you've been following my work for a very long time, you probably know and have heard me say this over and over and over again. Protests are not all that valuable in our modern society. Why? Other than signaling to some other, you know, people within your city or within your country or within the world that, hey, there's a group of people that are walking up and down the street that we believe in a particular idea and other people might look at that and go, yeah, I believe in that idea too. Protests typically don't lead to a whole lot. And it's because they've become this motion where, hey, okay, um, go out, walk around the streets, the governments are going to say, okay, let them have their moment. Okay, yeah, uh, okay, there they are walking, doing their thing. Okay, a couple hours are by. Okay, let's just move on with life then. That's what protests have been. That's what, you know, governments basically just avoid. They don't really talk about. They don't really, um, you know, take much into consideration when it comes to, to any protest that happens. Whatever the government wants to do, they do. They don't do things on behalf of the people. They don't do things that seem to be in support of what people want. They just do whatever it is they want to do, driven by whatever agenda it's driven by, whether that be corporate interests, whether that be their own interests, we don't know. That's the, that's the challenge, right? We, we see document after document continually come out that gives us deeper insight into the behind the scenes workings of governments and corruption and things that are going on. 
And yet we still sit here and, and assume, well, hey, if we just go protest, something will be okay. Well, these Freedom Convoy people did not assume that. They said, in order for us to make any impact at all, we have to be disruptive. Now, they weren't violent, they weren't aggressive, they didn't do anything that was illegal. They just simply said, we're going to be disruptive. We're going to go occupy this particular area. And by occupy, I mean, we're going to sit here and we're not going to move, <laughs> right? And as a result of that, it became very disruptive to Ottawa. They couldn't ignore it. And of course, they're now saying, okay, go home, go home, go home, because they want them out of their face. But they know that if they just go home, the government is not going to do anything about this particular mandate situation here in Canada. So they're staying there. And again, regardless of all the claims that these people are being angry and aggressive and they're, they're you know, desecrating monuments, it's been peaceful. It's been very peaceful. Here's a reminder of what the video looks like. And now let's take a look at some video of what happened after the LA Rams won the Super Bowl just a couple of days ago. Let's go to some video uh, we shot overnight that shows some of those crowds uh, and some of the celebrations in the streets after last night's championship wins. Officers say for the most part it was peaceful, but a group of about 100 did get destructive. An MTA bus spray painted with a couple people dancing on top. Others posed for pictures by it. And one driver began doing dangerous donuts in the middle of the crowd. Not clear exactly how that situation ended. And we have some video we want to show you as well of a storefront. This was on Broadway and Fifth, the hyper store. It was broken into uh, at the height of the celebration last night a group did go inside so in case we needed a reminder that's what actual violence that's what actual destruction looks like it's taking things and legitimately destroying them it looks like looting things it's damaging property causing financial damage to various things around a particular city whereas what's happening in Ottawa right now and we've seen this our own with our own eyes is nothing like that in fact people are shoveling and salting and cleaning up uh, a lot of the areas there. They're feeding the homeless. People are uniting. They're feeding each other. They're helping each other through various situations that arise. There is no damage. There is no looting. There is no destruction. The composure of the people involved in this protest has been incredible. And it's a model that so many of us should look at and say, hey, that is an incredibly beautiful way to deal with something that you don't agree with without using force, without using violence. And even the police on numerous of occasions feel within themselves, you know, and again, this is something you sense when you're down there. Yeah, I don't even know if I could, you know, commence on these people if I was asked to, because for the most part, I agree with what they're doing and they're not doing anything wrong. This should be a big signal that regardless of what's happening on the ground, the government coming up with ways to twist and manipulate and lie and try and convince people that these people are terrorists is outrageous. Like this is beyond something that Canadians should accept. Even if you disagree with these convoy participants, are you willing to sit there and call them terrorists? Is this something that actually makes sense in your being? When you set aside all the emotions, when you set aside all the frustration and all of the I'm going to say propaganda that we've seen throughout media about this particular convoy. Can you really look at these people and say that they're terrorists? What they're doing is terrorism? And if you are, I would say get on, a, get on a plane, get on a train, get in your car, go down to Ottawa, walk up and down the street for four or five hours, and tell me if you still think they are terrorists. Because if so, then it is what it is. You think they're terrorists. But the reality of the situation is a lot of people are making a judgment call based on what's happening in Ottawa, off of nothing more than false information that they've got from their government and they've got from media. Why would they be putting so much effort into lying? It's anyone's guess. And so if you're feeling uncomfortable about the idea that you know we're seeing all of this upheaval happen in our society over the last couple of years, and I would say this has been happening in our society for multiple decades, and if you're feeling as though there's a sense of instability that you're not sure where things are headed and where, where, you know, what's going on, that's okay, because the reality of the situation is our world and the, the systems and the structures that are here have been crumbling and are currently crumbling in various ways. People are starting to realize what is going on with regards to government overreach, with regards to corruption, with regards to, you know, the, the ability for governments to just continually take more and more authoritarian control over their citizens. People are seeing that. They're realizing that. They're looking at the evidence of it, and they're starting to say, you know what? No. This is, this is not okay. We're going to push back. 
And yes, it's creating you know, times of, of uncomfortable um, emotions. It's creating times of tension. It's creating times where we disagree with one another. This is par for the course. This is part of what we're going through. There is a transition of an old system slowly falling apart and slowly dying while people begin to take a step back and go, how do we create a world that is better, that values something more, that, that's more in touch with meaning and more in touch with purpose, more in touch with people thriving, as opposed to people just being workers, a part of a cog in a machine where everybody is reduced to, hey, what are you applying to the economy? How are you just helping the economy move? That old world is dying and a new world is starting to emerge. And many conversations are happening behind the scenes and here publicly about this sort of thing and about this sort of idea. And it can be very easy and tantalizing to get caught up in all the drama of the old world and where it should go and what should happen and who we should vote for and what's going on. But I invite you just for a moment to take a step back and say, is the old world that so many of us want to get back to, is it really something that was helping us thrive? Is it really something that we should be saying, this is it, this is what we want to be living in? Or are we seeing a deeper, greater transition going on where people are realizing, no, 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 that, that old world doesn't make sense. And what we're seeing happen is the inevitable, uncomfortable, resistant transition that's going to happen as we start to come to terms with the fact that massive large-scale change is underway on our planet in our societal infrastructures and that conversation around how we want things to look not coming from the elites and their great reset but coming from the people and a grassroots movement to say what type of world do i want to live in what is that supposed to look like this is part of what's going on right now and we can take peace in knowing that what's playing out in many many ways is just a result of this overall larger process that's going on